when I look at the stories that I got wrong during the COVID era, right, and mostly culture war related stories, it's because the media intentionally, and I'm going to say intentionally, omitted incredibly important details of those various controversial stories. The Kyle Rittenhouse story, perfect example of that. I got that story wrong because I relied on corporate media. And look, I, I have to hold myself accountable, so I'm not saying that to place blame or transfer the blame onto others. I should have done my due diligence and I should have gone out of my way to read from reporters that might have a different perspective. I didn't do that. And now I've learned to really go out of my way to understand the arguments made on all sides. Yes, recently, Patrick Pet David with Anna Kasparian, they sat down in an interview where she had to make it clear I was wrong. Patrick Pet David forced her to acknowledge what she has done in the past. She has pushed certain kind of narratives. We all know, like she quoted at the beginning of this video, it is important. I show you what exactly she has been doing. She actually makes sense in this video. Yeah, she said something that actually triggered my attention. Before we even go into that, if you are not subscribed to this channel, please endeavor to do that. It will do you no harm if you share out this video. Okay, so this is an Axios story. American trust in media has fallen to historic low. According to new polling from Gallup, trust in media has previously dropped to 32% in 2016 before rebounding slightly. Those gains have essentially been wiped out, according to the poll. Only 32% of population reports having a great deal or a fair amount of confidence that the media reports the news in full, fair, and accurate way. The, other, uh, the only other time in recent history that trust had fallen to 32% was in 2016. In some cases, the sentiment is worse today. Record high numbers, number of Americans, they don't trust the media at all. That number has steadily increased since 2018. Much of the sentiment dip is driven by Democrats and independents whose collective trust in media has plummeted 18 and 13 percentage points, respectively, from their 2018 peaks. Yes, it is actually funny. Who even trusts the mainstream media? If you realize you know, dating back to 2020 till now, the level at which people are deviating away from the mainstream media is going higher every single day. They have been doing this for a very long time and people do not realize. They keep falling for the trap, but people are waking now. Just take a look at what is happening now. They are calling out Biden the way it is without blinking words after lying to the people for a very long time. That is just exactly what I've observed. Well, I think that the polarization that we're experiencing with the American electorate is reflected in how the media conducts itself. I think depending on what you're watching, you will get only half of the story. Um, and then, so I think that's definitely true of some of the more new media outlets, independent outlets. They cater to a very specific portion of the audience, very specific portion of the electorate. And I think Americans are increasingly realizing, okay, I might be in a ideological bubble, depending on what kind of news I'm consuming. So you have that. Then on a more corporate level, if you want to put it that way, uh, corporate media, legacy media. I mean, they've gotten so many things wrong over the years. Yes. If you look at the right wingers, you know, the wheel of change is blowing very fast. They are not deviating. If you take a look at what is happening now, especially on these platforms, you will see things have changed. I'm seeing, you know, Libras, you know, trying to tear through people like the conservative side, having conversations, you know, trying to agree on things they always disagree. At first, it was not happening like that. You could not see this lady sitting with these people, but from the way they have realized, oh, we cannot link to the mainstream media. So the best thing is to link to the other side. At first, they used to depend on all sources, you know, coming from the mainstream media. Now, it is extremely difficult to see them, even reporting videos coming from them. And I think that all of those mistakes add up in people's minds and it leads to distrust. So I, look, I'll give you an example that I think you guys are probably definitely gonna agree with, um, but then I'll also talk about it in the context of some of the stories that I got wrong because I relied on legacy media. 
So in the lead up to the Mueller report, if you were consuming the New York Times, NBC, if legacy media was what you relied on for your information, you were under the impression that without question, the Mueller report will prove that Donald Trump had colluded. There was a big conspiracy between Donald Trump, Vladimir Putin and Russia. Mm -hmm. The report did not bear that out. And it was just I just felt like I was misled by a lot of that reporting. I felt like a sucker for buying that reporting. So that already was like a major mm -hmm. hit when it came to my trust in corporate media. If you enjoy content like this, then make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a ton. Let's get back to the video. Legacy media. Then I saw the way they treated uh, Cenk Uger when he ran for Congress. The lies they told about him were outrageous. And I was like, oh, my God. I don't know what to believe from them if they are willing to literally take an interview he did with David Duke. That was a super heated interview. Cenk was not friendly to him. I mean, they took a sarcastic comment that Cenk made in the context of that interview and they reported it as if he was like he wasn't sarcastic, yeah. like he meant what he said. And you go back and you watch that interview, you watch that statement and you're like, no, it's very obvious he's being sarcastic here. So you start losing trust as these I don't even want to say mistakes. I feel like in some cases, some reporters have an agenda and their agenda becomes clear in their misreporting. Intentional. Intentional. Now, I don't think that's always the case. I don't think that's the case the majority of the time. And I look at the stories that I got wrong during the COVID era, right? And mostly culture war related stories. It's because the media intentionally, and I'm going to say intentionally, omitted incredibly important details of those various controversial stories. The Kyle Rittenhouse story, perfect example of that. I got that story wrong because I relied on corporate media. And look, I, I have to hold myself accountable, so I'm not saying that to place blame or transfer the blame onto others. I should have done my due diligence and I should have gone out of my way to read from reporters that might have a different perspective. I didn't do that. What she said here is nothing but the truth. If you rely on the mainstream media for info, your reasoning will be different. I usually see it on daily basis, even on my comment sections. When I see someone that focuses more on CNN and MNBC, the way the reason is totally different. The way they see things, they don't believe that, oh, this can be true. They always like to attach themselves away from reality which is something when I came into this platform, I used to watch here and I used to watch these places. I sat down one day, I had to reflect like, what they're feeding me, is it really true? I had to go for alternative media to follow up stories. You know, then I saw the difference. What she say here is nothing but the truth. And now I'm glad she has realized it. Though a Libra will always be a Libra, they cannot change no matter what. Major insurance. If you're with